called chalan chalan is like i like to think of it as the geography of the raga the phraseology the uh the territory so the basic territory i'm going through these phrases which uh belong to the raga <clears throat> So I'm seeing it very free in the style of alap. Alap is the kind of um, the introduction and the deepest part of the essence of the raga, because it doesn't have the rhythm aspect. It has this only this free time kind of spaciousness. So I'm using the phrases of the raga to kind of navigate through the territory. All these phrases we've pretty much learned. I'm just kind of putting them together in, in spontaneous ways. And that's how, that's how we unfold the raga, really. Nita. So has everyone learned your sargam, Sarigama Padanisa? Everyone got that glangin? Good, good. So we need that because that's those are kind of our our words that that we put together sentences with in the raga. Nidegamapa <laughs> Thanks, Army. You really distracted me now. Now I'm looking out the window. Nire nigare. There's a chicken in the window listening to the raga. That's why <laughs> Army had to point that out. Oh, there she went. She left. Nire gare. Sai 
Now I'm starting to play with different phrases, new phrases that we haven't learned. But you can do that too. Just try to remember these essential phrases and come back to them. Nidega madani, nidega resa, nidapama dapama pa. Mani dani madapama. Now, normally when we sing a lap, we would use a uh, akar. A uh, means instead of instead of all the sargams, that's called sargams. <clears throat> you can write that, Ben. S A R G A M. Sargam is the solfege. And then the, 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 the kind of uh, architecture is called chalan, C H A L A N. <clears throat> so. When we begin, it's very useful to use the sargams, uh, even in improvising, you know. <laughs> then later, <clears throat> we can start using uh, akar. Uh, So this is like la, la la la, but ah, ah car. Put your ah in a car and go. So <clears throat> this, this, you hear this more actually. If you listen to, um, if you listen to Indian classical singers, ah car is kind of the norm. And then usually they'll use the sargams when they have the tabla going and they've sang the song with the lyrics already and then they want to improvise using the sargams. But when we begin and learn the fundamentals, it's very useful to have the sargams in your wheel wheelhouse, your wheelbarrow. So, because then we so start associating the sounds of those intervals with these names, just like a movable dough system of Western solfege. Because sa is relative to the key we're singing in, right? So if I change it to C or D or whatever, F, could be any key. Say. So for instance, instead of with akar, so it's more fluid. Akar is more fluid because there's no vowels to break up the sound. We're just. Uh, it's just a little accenting on each note. So it's a much more fluid. I don't know what I'm saying. Ni is the emphasis now. Ni de gama, ni de gama thani. What's that mean? Write that down. Mean, M E E N D. Mean is the sliding note. Ni se. Good. 
So how we slide between the notes is very specific. And that's something that we learn over years and years, but you can just start doing it and start trying to hear the notes with this, all this connecting tissue. That little shadow note. Phrases. Everyone's memorizing by now. Anyway, I'm sure. Remember, we add the octave one on the third one. Gama Tani Tapama Nide Gama Gadesa Nida Pama Gadesa. Now string them together. Nide Gama Gadesa Gama Tani Tapama Nide Gama Gadesa Nida Pama Gadesa. So how many beats is this? Eight. I want to show you everyone how to count beats on their built-in abacus. This is how double players count. Da din din da. Da din din da. Da din din na na din din da. Nire gama gare sa gama da ni da ba ma. Nire gama gare sa ni da ba ma gare sa ni. Oops. So we're going here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Our most common cycle in Hindustani music is teen tal. Teen means three. Go figure, it's 16 beats. <laughs> but uh, there's three claps. I think that's what the origin of Teen Talk comes in. It's clap, clap, wave, clap. There's nothing to do with how many beats. It's three claps, Teen Talk. Uh, 16 beats. Okay, so we can count like this. Ta, din, din, da, da, din, din, da, da, din, din, na. Na din din da one 
Five. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Mire kama gare sa gama dani da pama. Mire kama gare sa ni da pama gare sa. So this is the normal way to keep tala. Is you just clap every four. And the nine is halfway through, so you do an open hand. Kali, that's called Kali. Sum. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we can count like that, which is kind of the normal way. When we want to get really into the nitty gritty, count like this. So you have a count for every beat. Then you then you can make different calculations like we're gonna do in a minute with the things we did before, like sevens and tens. So <clears throat> now we did it in seven. So each phrase is, is eight notes. When did we do it one per beat? Rest. So we drop that rest right there. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Instead of going to the end of this, this, what is this, the ring, ring finger? We jump back to the one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ni de gama ga de sa. Gama ta ni ta pa ma. Ni de gama ga de sa. Ni ta pa ma. So now that's two per beat. Okay, so we started single and then we just doubled it. We went from quarter notes to eighth notes, but our count is still the same. So I'm just showing you a new way to count these beats. Now let's go back to the way we learned it. I'm a big proponent of learning things in multiple ways, because I think our brain registers it better that way. So I teach this way. Di, di, na, di, na, di, na. Two, three, four, five, six, which is normal tala keeping. Like you'll see people do this in concerts. And if you see someone doing it like this, they're probably a tabla player. So, because they're really trying to like hear like where the T highs are, where these crazy rhythms are starting and ending. So, two ways to, to account for the beats. Now you know them both. This is, what I love about this is hopefully you never lose your hand. You always have it with you. <laughs> and you can count beats very accurately. Now, this way, you can also do sub beats like that. Well, actually, each beat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. This is the more common way you'll see people keep Tala. So we go. Ni re ga ma ga re sa ga ma ta ni da pa ma ni Now, every other set of seven is going to start on, on a syncopation. That's what's tricky about this. So let's go back and uh, repeat each one, repeat each seven. So we can s easily see where the syncopation is. Ni de gama gare sa, ni de gama gare sa, gama da ni da pa, gama da ni da pa ma, ni de gama gare sa, ni de gama, ni da pa ma gare sa, ni da pa ma gare sa. So if we take that descending scale as an example, ni da pa ma gare sa. 
look at look at this. Where do the beats land? Ni, ni da pa ma ga re sa. Ni da pa ma ga re sa. Ni da pa ma ga re sa. So on the second one, ni da pa ma ga re sa. See how it's starting in the space? It's not starting in the clap. That's because we're doing it double speed. Ni da. Ni da pa ma ga re sa. 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 So I like to think of the the, an, the anti beat, the off beat, and like feel that physically. So da 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 da. So I, I feel that the down beat and the up beat. Da da like maybe like a like a a conductor would feel that. Ba those are upbeats, right? Ni da pa ma ga re sa. So and then when we accent those, that creates rhythmic tension, and the rhythmic tension makes music better, more more interesting. <laughs> uh, I think it's like harmonic tension. It's the same kind of thing, but we're using um, rhythmic dissonance, as one of my teachers says, wrote a book called Rhythmic Dissonance for, for jazz musicians, how to play in different kinds of offbeat accents and polymeters and polyrhythms. So this is really what I love to explore. So if you need to really break this down, think about the underlying pulse. One, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven. Ni ni de ga ma, ni de ga ma ga re sa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Da 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 da. Ni de ga ma ga re sa, ni de ga ma ga re sa. Then, ni de ga ma ga re sa, ni de. Single, double. So that second one, that's what you have to get. So we've been doing this a lot. Then, then we did it in, with fives. So just first of all, your phrase has to be fives. So we need to drop two notes. Ni de ga re sa ni so ni de ga re sa ni de ga re sa one two three four five one two three four five this is actually ten beat cycle but if this is hard to get the sec the A and B part just do five it's fine for now D na D D na ni de ga re sa ni Double. So it is the same movement as ni re ga re sa, but now starting ma. Madhani da pa, skipping the pa like we skip skip the sa below. Madha Madhani da pa, 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 Madhani da. Nire gare sa, nire gare. Ni <laughs> Any five notes. So I'm just using the phrases that are similar to the ones we already know and just dropping out a note at the beginning of the end. That way you can cultivate 
kind of new ways to break all these phrases up. So, any questions about this? Because <clears throat> I want to go on to some other stuff. Uh, but I want to make, we've been doing this for some weeks now, and I want to make sure everyone's like, is everyone kind of like, oh, this is easy now, or this is still challenging, or, or what? Are me? Mike, what's up? Anybody? Is all of this mastered? You guys are like master of disaster. Uh, I have a question real quick. Cool. Uh, who's um, yeah, I asked this already, but I, 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 um, I guess there was no documentation for the, um, for the 10 beat cycle as far as like, and I guess I'm seeing it now, but wh where's the open clap exactly? Oh, Yusef, Yusef. Um, okay. Yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, I was trying to figure out. Yeah. So uh, I think I added it to that document. Is it not there? Oh, oh maybe maybe I'm not seeing it or something. Um, um, is it on the the main document? It's the one. I have to look on which one it okay. is. Can you check that, Ben? It should be the one that, that looks like this. This is just an old printout. And then it has the job tall at the oh, bottom. Yeah, I didn't see it on that, but. Okay, I'll, um, I'll check it afterwards. Cool. But yeah, this the, the, the job doll goes like this. D, na, D, D, na, D, na, D, D, na. So it's always two and three, two and three. Two, three, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's called chop doll. J H A P T A L. And that's one of the uh, really important uh, main talas or rhythmic cycles. I like to think of the talas as clocks because they're cycles with the one at the top so like I, um team tall would be like a 16 beat clock and it just winds around and sometimes it increases speed and goes faster but it's always just going around and it's and it's this cyclic uh modality which reflects the nature because everything in nature is in cycles so that's one of the uh, connections with this music is it's always winding back around again through these cycles. So, but you can also have a 10 beat clock like we're doing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. You know, I have I have a visual visual representation. I'll try to upload two of the teen thought clock. I'm gonna make a note on that. But hi, Paul. Yeah. There's a Rupak tal at the bottom, not the Jab tal. Oh. Okay. I'll add the Jab tal this week. And then check check in like uh, midweek or send me an email if it's not there. But uh, it's like all, I'm sure we can find that online too, but I'll put it on this same, on this same chart. So thanks for bringing that to my attention. So uh, unless there's any other questions about this, I'm going to go on to some of the rhythm stuff. <clears throat> Do you guys have those polyrhythm pages, those polyrhythms that we did? Um, let's see, did Ben put the, the link there in case anyone has it? Yeah, that Google Doc. So let's just start with the three over two. <clears throat> I'm gonna move back a little bit so you can see. So the important thing about the polyrhythms is usually we have to hear it as a composite rhythm first and then separate the two rhythms, which are really like two tempos. Um, so the composite rhythm of three over two is da 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 da
Ta ta Thank you, Alma. Ta ta tom. Ta ta tom. Ta ta tom. Ta ta tom. So my right hand is doing the three. One, two, three. One, two, three. My left hand is doing the two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. So this one feels slower. One, two. Three. So starting with the composite means both the rhythms, how they sound together. Da, 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 dom, da, da, dom, da, 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 dom, da, da, dom. Then I count the right hand. This is my right. Da, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Then I switch to the left. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that may be very rudimentary for some of us, but I want to make sure that we understand it conceptually and can do it. Because sometimes it's easy to do the composite, but then to, to, to pull out the individual parts is tricky. I'm going to take these off. So, um, I've been working on seven over four, which I wanted to show you at the end, but I wanted to first see how you guys are understanding this. Uh, just let me know if this, if, if, if this first one, uh, the three over two is like pretty, pretty easy. Cause I, I kind of want to measure how much we can go forward right now. So does everyone feel like that first polyrhythm is pretty, uh, it's pretty basic. Look, I'm going to screen share and make sure you guys see what I'm talking about. See that? Everyone see that? Can you see my screen? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, Paul. So, now, the variations um, are better when we count in six. You know, any of these you can count in six, but you see how the, the left boxes uh, are on the top and the right boxes are on the bottom? That's your left and right hand, right? So if I do this, da, 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 that's the first variation. See, together, right, left, right, together. You see that? On beat five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, da, ka, ding, ka, dong, 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 da, ka, ding, ka, dong. So that's the first variation. Everyone see that? Yeah. Now look at the second variation. Left, left, right, left. Together, right, left, left, right, left. Both right, left, left, right, left. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's, it's, these are just variations of the same polyrhythm. Okay, now, now the next one. Is the same. Why did I write that different? Oh, I'm just counting it in six there. So, never mind that one. I think this may be an old version I pulled up. So now, now, can you see these four over threes? See these? This is a little more involved because uh, <clears throat> you remember how we did the different rhythms like taki, 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 taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taki is three, taka dimmi is four. So there's always a total number of pulses that we have. Uh, in each polyrhythm. So in the two over three, the total number of pulses was six. Right? And all you have to do is, is times them together and you get the total number of pulses, right? Two, two times three. Now four times three, four over three, we have 12 pulses. 
Oh, I have to fix this document. The 12 got pulled over to the next page. So, but you get the idea. Uh, I think that's why I got to update this one. I pulled the, I pulled the wrong one out. So I'm going to fix that after class. This is an old version. Uh, <clears throat> so do you see how I've right here? Can you see me highlighting this? I think there's another document, Paul, that has the 12 in the same page. Okay. Yeah. I'll pull that into the right folder afterwards. Thank you. So you see what I'm highlighting here, Takita? So that is the three, right? Takita, Takita, one, two, three, one, two, three. So in 12 pulses, we'll have four repetitions of three. And then the Takademi, the four in the right hand, will have three repetitions of four. And then you get this rhythm. No, so that's the idea with that one. It's a little harder because there's uh, there's just more complexity to it. Uh, now the variation. One, two, three. Da, 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 ba, boom. Pop on two, three, pop, pop, left, right, right, left, right, left, together, together, right, left, right, right, left, pop, boom, pop, da, boom, pop, pop, ding, ding, pop, pop, boom, pop, pop, boom. If that one's tricky for you right now, stick to the basic one, which is above it. Paul, can um, I, may I ask a question? Uh huh. So, what is that we're trying to do here? Um, what is the basic tal that we are referring to and how many beats are we trying to put into that thing? Okay, what we're doing is we're, we're doing two rhythms at once. So we're doing a rhythm of three and a rhythm of four simultaneously. So it's not exactly related to tala because um, tala we, we focus on doing rhythms within a cycle. Now you could say this is in a cycle of 12, but it's, this, this is more like to, an exercise for, for being able to uh, execute cross rhythms. So say I had a piece in 12 uh, and I was playing along and I wanted to improvise something that kind of had threes across it, you know? So then I could use this polyrhythm to play four threes across that rhythm. So these are just musical tools. This isn't like just for Indian music. This could be any music. This could be jazz. This could definitely be African music. So um, there's a lot of polyrhythm in African music. It's, it's full of polyrhythm, and that's why it's so rhythmically dense and complex. Um, so this, these are kind of universal musical principles that uh, will help us become better musicians. And, uh, and be able to hear more in the Indian music because these things are used so, so much in music of India as well. Thank you. Sure. So um, anyone else have a, have, a, have a question about this? What's up, Nick? Why are you hiding there? I'm unmuting you. You there? Yo, anyone else have a question? Hey, hey, so Paul, I don't know why I wasn't unmuting. Um, yeah. So basically when you were saying, when you're doing a solo, you're going like takita, like, so what's the tar? You could actually break the accents up on each count of three. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. That is wicked. Okay, cool. I get it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, and this is just the beginning, you know? So, for instance, uh, we can even do it in Tintal in 16. But the problem with that is if you phrase threes, 16 isn't divisible by three, is it? 
It's not. Yeah. So you could do four, right? So, so you would have to add a four. So in Tintal, uh, you could do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Or you could put the four at the end because basically three, four is just, uh, four threes is 12. And then you have an extra four to play with. So you can put that at the beginning of the end. You can put the threes at the beginning. One, two, three, 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 four, one. So this way it creates more interesting uh, rhythmic elements and tension in the music, you know? So I wanna show you something I've been working on, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And, and, and I've been work, I'm not like a good pianist, but I've been working these out with some chords on the piano to play bass line in four and then chords in seven. So this is actually seven, seven over four. It goes like this. Taka dimmi taki ta taka dimmi taki ta taka dimmi taki ta taka dimmi taki ta one two three four 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 five six seven one two three four five six seven one two three one two three four five six seven one So this took me a little while to get this and then and then I'm working out like Bass line of five of seven notes in four one. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 one. So then I can separate the two things, right? I can play a bass line in seven, I mean a bass line in four, in seven four where each each uh, each has a count of four, and then uh, everything's in seven four. Let me explain this better. The bass line is going one two three four 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 one, right? And then the chords were going in seven, eight. So you have this cool uh, polyrhythm on one instrument. Now, that's hard to do on a lot of instruments, but on piano, we can do stuff like that. So that's, that's just something cool I wanted to share. And that's something that we can we can do and advance in, in different lessons, or if we get there, we'll do in the class too. But I want to make sure that we can do these basic things first. You feel me? I'm going to stop this share. Here we go. Boom. Back intact. So it's really unlimited what you can do with these polyrhythms. It just takes, you know, the, 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 the more, uh, like if you were, complex the ratio is because these are actually ratios so you could put them three colon two and the reason they're ratios is is mathematically uh the waveforms work out exactly like that so say you have um 220 hertz which is a pretty you know medium range towards the lower frequencies. If you had another note going at 330 hertz, you would have a perfect fifth apart, represented by the mathematical ratio of, of, of three over two. And then if you slowed that chord down, you would hear it as this. Those two frequencies, our mind, instead of pursuing them as pitches because the frequencies are so fast, we would hear them as rhythms and we would hear this polyrhythm. So harmony and polyrhythm are really essentially the same thing. Um, and so when we have complex harmony, phenomena, phenomena, phenomenologically, we hear it as, as because of the frequency range, we hear it as uh, chords. Uh, but if you just slow down those very chords, you'll hear them as polyrhythms. So it's kind of a really interesting 
dorky, geeky, science out kind of way of looking at music. Um, Paul, quick yeah. question. Yeah. So when you have, like, you're, you're playing a scale and you play a wrong note, is it because it's out of that polyrhythm, technically? A clash of... Um, How would you describe that? I wouldn't that? take that metaphor too far, you know, because uh, the, the polyrhythms we're doing, they're like very basic harmonies. So <clears throat> if you're thinking about a scale itself, first of all, that's not a polyrhythm because you're just, ta you're just talking about linear notes. You're not talking about chords. You're not building two, two notes upon each other and signing the, sounding them simultaneously, you know, whatever. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know, that that is like two different. You can think of them because frequencies go by at certain speeds, pitches go by at certain speeds. So one of those one of those waveforms is going slower than the other, and and the harmony is actually the dance. It's a, it's them coming into a, a consonant ratio with one another. So don't think of it as a scale. Because a scale would just be like, uh, you know, a rhythm getting faster. If you were to, if you were to use that same analogy, so I wouldn't take that one too far. What's up, Sudama? Hola. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Nice yeah. Right. Happy to be here. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, did that answer your question? It did. Yeah. I I was meaning more like when I said scale. You're, you're playing a chord of three notes from the same scale. And if you were to play an incorrect note that's not a part of the scale as a chord, it would sound off, right? Like, well, I mean, it depends, what, depends what you were, what you're going for, you know? Um, if you wanted to sound, to sound something that sounded like di diatonic, you know, harmony and just like major and minor chords and you, and you played a wrong note, then it's, it's, yeah, it's not going to sound like that chord. Um, okay, so, you got it. Yeah, I think we could kind of formulate your question a little better to, to think about, because chords are kind of infinite too. At, at a certain time, a certain point, when you were naming chords, the, 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 the nomenclature just breaks down because there's, there's uh, multiple ways that you can name chords. Uh, but that gets into complex harmony, which is not part of this this class, you know. Perfect. The, Thanks, Paul. Yeah, the point I was trying to make is 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 these polyrhythms are just like harmonies, but they're slowed down and in, into into this sub. Uh, you know, what? I don't know what what what's the what's the lowest frequencies we hear, like sixty hertz or fifty hertz. It's below that, we don't hear them. As pitches anymore, we start hearing this like rumbles, right? If you hear really low frequencies, it sounds like rumbles. If you slow rumbles down, it starts sounding like a rhythm, right? So, so this is just the physics and nature of sound. It's really interesting because uh, uh, I always geek out on this. I don't know why, but but this this idea of rhythm and harmony are are just two ways of perceiving sound. So um, that's enough about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so did you guys kind of get the idea of what, why these polyrhythms are useful? Like da, ta, ta, don, da, ta, ta, don. So if we're playing with someone and, and we just have this simple polyrhythm of three over two, someone's bass could be Boom, ding, gong, ding, gong, ding, gong, ding, gong, ding, gang, gong, boom, ding, gong, ding, gong. Someone else would be doom, ba, gong, ding, da, do, da, do. Or they could be playing double of the three. So that's a six of this three. Three, one, two, three, one, and two, three, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, boom, bang, ding, gong, ding, gong, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's so many infinite uses of this. And then when you get into the, the, um, the four of a three, then you have, instead of the six total pulses to play with, you have 12. 
So, and that's where a lot of the, uh, <laughs> that's what you hear a lot in African music, really. The, 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 you'll have, you'll feel twos and threes and fours and sixes just f all flowing together like this crazy matrix. And, and you know, you, people can drive this part of it that way and another cat will be playing this part of it that way. And it's just like this beautiful, you know, interconnected web of rhythms. And that's what I think makes African music so danceable. So on that note, let's stand up and finish with some, some movement. Okay. All right. I got my, uh, my lungi on here. So, um, <clears throat> oh, I have a metronome here. So I really encourage you, I've been reading this, this really great book on clave and the African origins of polyrhythm and everything. By the way, there's that page and I'm gonna fix that one before we're done. But um, let me find my metronome. Okay, this is 75. Can you hear that? Let me loop it. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Right, left, right. So let's go through the, the, the Sokatu. This is a little faster than we did it before, but I want to see if we how how to what rhythm we can get up to the jutties. You remember the jutties we did? Da 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 Taka, takita, 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 taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi, ta, 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 taka, 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 takita, 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 taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi. Let's try to go to the five. Taka takita, 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 din takita, din. Now we had a variation on that. Tadi gain at the 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 tatang, at that tongue, at that tongue, at that tongue, at din da, din da, din da, din da. Tadi gain at the tadi gain at the taki, the taka So taka takita is two three. Taka, takita, and tadigenatum is just like a flowing five. So even in these odd rhythms, we can have different variations, which make it sound, you know, less monotonous. Like you ever hear like a garage rock band playing in seven and it all sounds the same? This way you can avoid that, you know? You can have different kinds of sevens, different kinds of fives, different kinds of, uh, Composite rhythms. Why do I say composite? Because we're going two and three. Taka taki to 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 Now I'm just doubling that. We'll get to that later. Now let's try getting to six. Remember what we did? Dinaka taki to dinaka taki to dinaka taki to dinaka taki to dinaka taki to. Oops. Dinakataki, the 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, dinakataki. It's much easier to say than counting. That's why we drill these. Uh, in North India, we call them bowls. Bowl means to speak. You know, you're putting it into existence, you're bringing it out of your body into the world, you're speaking the rhythm. That, Dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the takataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinak. Now, when I go back to the fives, the tempo is the same, but it'll feel like slowing down because now I'm subdividing from six to five. I'm like pulling it down a little bit. Dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the dinakataki, the takataki, the takataki, the takataki, the takataki. Ita taka taki ta taka taki ta taka taki ta taka dimmi taka dimmi taka dimmi taka dimmi oh I got off taka dimmi taka dimmi taka dimmi taka dimmi taka dimmi taka dimmi so if I go from six down to one it should feel like you're landing 
The train is coming into the station. So now if we get to seven, takita takademi. Three and four composite. Let's try it a little slower. Just before we wrap this up. <clears throat> I'm going to put all the way back to the 60 so we can take it up to 8. So, 60 beats per minute. So now <clears throat> our seven will be a little manageable, a little more manageable. What we do is it's four and four, but we want to contrast it. It's more interesting with the contrast. Taka dimi taka jinna. The jinna gives kind of a, like a like a little bass vibration at the end. It kicks you back to the one, right? Taka dimi taka jinna. 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 So you really want to get this in your body. That's what this all is about. Later, we'll play it on our instruments. But this whole class is about embodying all these things so that once we have them inside, no one can take them away. And it's hard to forget something that you've embodied, right? You've, you, you've brought it out. You know, it's like singing. You really have to know what you're singing when you're singing because you can't just press, press it on buttons, right? Singing is a very kind of, I call it a naked act because you're very transparent and vulnerable. Your voice is out there for people to hear and say, wow, that was great, or oh, that was a lot of tune, or that was a little whack, or that was cool. You know, so um, all of these things will make us more confident because we're bringing them out from inside, right? Oh man, that's 50. So I'm just going to turn this off for now. So <clears throat> now I just want to remind you that these subdivisions are called japtis, J-A-T-I. This is different from the work we're doing with, with the polyrhythms, um, which don't change jati. That means we're just phrasing them to fit to have the same rhythmic values. For instance, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All my all my uh numbers are the same value there. They're not changing subdivisions within the beats like we're doing with the jatis. So that's a very important distinction when you're working with rhythm because you have the jatis, subdivisions, and then you have the phrases uh, or cross rhythms, what I like to call cross rhythms. A lot of jazz musicians use that term. Like they'll be playing just eighth notes, but they'll be phrasing them in three or phrasing them in seven or phrasing in nine or five or whatever. And that creates a lot of... Uh, syncopated accenting 
which creates that rhythmic dissonance we talked about. So any questions? I think we're going to wrap it up now. Um, Cause we've been going since seven. What book are you reading? Yeah. Oh, what's what, that? What book are you reading about the clave? Oh, it's called uh, Unlocking Clave. Okay. Um, and cool. I don't remember the, the author right now, but I'll try to uh, post it on the Raga Jazz page. Um, awesome. Yeah, I just, I just launched my new website, everyone. Let me put it in the, uh, in the chat. It's just my name. Uh, I had an old website for a long time, and then I just launched a new one, so I wanted to give you guys that. Oh, man, I can't even figure this out now. Mina, can you put it in? Paul Z. Livingstone? Are you there? I'm here. Just put it in the chat for me. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'll do that. I'm being dumb. I can't do it for some reason. It's It has the Z in it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've got a new uh, uh, a new record up there, which maybe you guys already know about. And all those links for the documents are in that Google document. Oh, and hey, uh, Ben, can you put the link for the concert? We have a, a, a live cast concert on Sunday. Uh, or Mina, maybe you can put it there. Cool. It's actually on the on the website and put the soul force project thing there. Why is it my, is this what it is? Paul Z Livingston. Not yeah. X. I put Paul X. It is Paul Z. I can't see myself. Yeah, no X. It should be a Z. Oh, wait, wait, no, I figured it out. Here we go. So the concert, on Sundays with a great jazz singer named Dwight Tribble. He's, he's like an amazing kind of channeler of divine jazz improvisations. So, uh, and that will be hosted. It'll be a live stream from my backyard. And I'll be playing bass and sitar. And I'll, I'm gonna put the website, which if you guys haven't seen the Soul Force website, this is our kind of nonviolence project. I'm putting that in here too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, on, on my, on, on my website, Paul Z. Livingstone, there's a link for the, uh, for the concert too. So, yo, anyone else got questions about stuff? I'm glad to see you, Sadama. We got to get you in here earlier next time. I know. I'm going to, I'm going to jump right on in. I'm all game. <laughs> all right. Yeah, man. Great to have the uh, the Santa Barbarius connection flowing. I'm so glad you're on the planet. You're you're definitely holding certain information nicely for a lot of folks. That's great. Thank you, brother. Likewise, likewise. Miss hey, you, man. Paul. Yo. This is Sebastian. How are you doing? Good. Uh, thanks for the classes, as always. This is great. Um, I actually got a question, a um, little bit, uh, kind of a different um, question. So, I took um, you play you play guitar too, right? The fretless guitar. So I took the yeah. fret out of one of my acoustics. Oh, cool! Put in a metal, sort of like a metal sheet or a metal plate. And oh, awesome! So, so I, I got a question about how you do it with the back of the fingernails. So I can't really grow my left hand fingernails. Oh. Because oh. I, I, I need, you know, when I play guitar, <laughs> I can't really have the fingernails. So yeah. how, do you, uh, how do you manage that? Well, I've tried different ways, but this is my fretless guitar. Uh, so I actually play on the nail like this, like Sarod style. Right, yeah. <laughs> So, so that's one way to do it, but it's really it's really challenging for normal guitar players to do that because it's right. It's like not a normal technique at all. Uh, but I used to play with these thimbles on my fingers, 
because uh-huh. obviously, as you probably discovered, that the sound is really dead on your on just your fingertips. Right. Yeah. And then the back of the nail works really well, but um, if you have really short nails, then that, so do you grow your nails for that? Uh, I just mine are not very long because I play sitar mainly, so I can't have them very long. But I've managed to be able to just kind of lean into them without getting on the backs of my nails. But I do know a Sarod player who plays on the backs of his nails because his fingernails are too weak, part of sadhati. Uh, but that's very unusual and unorthodox. So, yeah, the point is if you can find a place on your nail to play, you'll get a much brighter sound, especially a t- steel string like that. Yeah. And the yeah. thimbles, you, would you just use regular ones that, you know, like those? Regular what? Like the, you said finger thimbles you were using? Oh, no, I had made them myself to fit on each of my fingers. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, with sheet metal and a, and a jeweler's hammer, I sat there for hours kind of forming them to fit each of my fingers. Wow. And, I don't even, and I don't even use those anymore. But that, that, that was my original experiment. All right. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do a lesson sometime, uh, we, could, we could do it on fretless guitar and I could kind of show you how I go deeper into that, you know? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, hit me up and... Um, yeah. Yeah, on, on my website, there's a place, if anybody ever wants to sign up for lessons, there's a place that has open times on the Raga Jazz uh, music link on the website. Uh, let's see, I think. She... Hi, Paul. Yeah, there it is. Okay, yeah, now the link is there. Yeah, who's that? It's Mina. Hey, Mina. Hi, do you know Scott is not coming this year? I do know that. I'm very sad. Very local who can get us is sitar tuned. Jawari, I think Suman Laha is what I've been telling people. Oh. Yeah. I got an email from Scott saying that he's not coming this year. Yep. Yeah, this is our sitar repair person who's uh, comes down from Washington <laughs> State. But uh, thanks for showing up. I hope everyone can come next week and spread the word and try to come to the live cast concert on Sunday. It's at 5 p.m. left coast time. Um, so I know some, some of you are in other countries, so you'd have to figure that out. But uh, um, Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. This, this Sunday, it's our Sounds of Soul Force concert with Dwight Tribble. And really great young saxophone player and a really wonderful drummer who plays tabla and drums and all kind of percussion. So uh, please join us and uh, spread the word about the class. I'll see you guys next Monday. Thanks, man. Namaste. Adios. Viva la revolucion. Viva. All right. Peace out. Peace. See ya.